welcome to Half the Battle. Today we're going back to the comic. And we'll be looking at issue 61, beginnings, dramatic pause, and endings. And in case you're wondering what happened to the special missions reviews... I was holding off on them because the next issue of that series ties into the storyline that's starting in this one. The cover has Stalker and Snowjob shooting with an injured Quick Kick who apparently brought nunchucks to a gunfight. So it looks like they're gonna have fun this issue. The opening page has these three plus Outback being briefed by Hawk on how they're gonna get into that mess. An American reporter has been arrested in the country of Barovia on trumped up espionage charges and they have to get him out. What, you've never heard of Barovia? It's right next door to Latveria and is currently in a trade dispute with Wakanda. They're given fake identities and are to meet up with a contact. Also, they're all temporarily fired from the military, so the government can deny any involvement if things go tits up. You know, the standard Mission Impossible spiel. They arrive in Krugd... Kr... Um, Krugd... It's a sound you make when you get your sexual organs trapped in something. <laughs> in Barovia. They arrive in Barovia, and the bellboy reminds Stalker not to spit in the hallway. Is that even an African stereotype? I mean, I know it's a Chinese stereotype, but this is news to me. Anyway, they meet up with their contact, and I think I know why Outback's cover is an Arab engineer, even though he looks about as Arab as Prince Harry. It's so you can tell him and Snowjob apart, since they're both redheads with a beard. Spigu, that's the informant, informs them. Heh, <laughs> get it? He informs them that a journalist is held in a security building that prisoners tend to not walk back out of. He's got blueprints, but they may be out of date. He does have details on the guards and has weapons for the Joes. They arrive at the building that night, posing as garbage men, and take out the guard while Stalker does his best Oscar the Grouch impression. Things go swimmingly at first, with them taking out the three guards without any trouble, and they find themselves going through the cells. There's just one tiny problem. The guy they're looking for... isn't actually there. They have a friendly chat with one of the guards who informs them their target is free and in Washington because the State Department had exchanged him for a Barovian spy without telling the military. So this whole thing was completely pointless. It's at this time that the aforementioned tits in fact do go up. As other guards discover there's something wrong and the whole garrison is alerted. The Joes manage to shoot their way out of the building, but their troubles are only beginning. Also, there's a word balloon error, as Quick Kick apparently tells himself to haul it. That, or he likes talking to himself. He gets shot for his troubles in the next panel. And Snowjob also got shot, though this happened off-panel. They're trying to get away, driving through the city, when they get a lucky break as Roadblock shows up to help them and promptly shoots Spigu. Oh, sorry, my mistake. They run into a Roadblock, not their friend. This is what happens when you give people code names that mean other things. Poor, poor Skidmark. Anyway, with cannons to the left of them, cannons to the right of them, etc., into an alley road to not quite 600. Unfortunately, it's a dead end. Spigu, who is aware he isn't part of the toy line and has been shot, buys the other some time by reversing out of the alley. The situation is grim with two wounded Joes, so Stalker orders Outback to escape and tell Hawk what went down. Spigu sacrifices himself and the Barovians capture Stalker, Quick Kick and Snowjob, with Outback hiding beneath them in the sewer, with his friend's blood dripping on him. Damn! And the comic ends with Barovia telling the world they captured American mercenaries as the Joes look on in disgust. And there's more bad news. Yeah, remember that whole disavowed thing? That means there will be no rescue mission. And that was beginnings, dramatic pause and endings. I have to say, this issue is... Uh, uh, excuse me. Yellow? What, there's more of the comic to go? The bit with Cobra Commander? Well, yeah, I know that, but it's also got Raptor in it, and I don't want to deal with that ridiculous bullcrap and the pogo and all that. Do it or I'm fired? Okay, then. There's more comic to review, I guess. Hey, wait a minute, I'm self-employed! So we meet up with Bird Coil and the gang at Fred's place. Billy, who had amnesia, is back and remembers everything. Being in a resistance group against Cobra, going to confront his father when he had the car accident, everything. Raptor tells him to show some respect. Which leads to the greatest comeback in the entire comic series! You can go lay an egg, Raptor. I love this because it works on two levels. 
First, just as Billy shutting him up, but second, as Larry Hama once again meta-commenting on the absurdity of Raptor. The only thing Billy doesn't remember is how to hate as much. He's ready to lead his own life and wants to leave their little Game of Thrones world behind him. That doesn't sit well with Fred, who says he knows too much. Of course, Billy has had ninja training, so he neutralizes Fred and Raptor too when he tries to sick his birds on him. Leading to another burn that may as well be Larry Hama looking directly into the camera. Too much bad karma generated striking someone as pathetic as you. <laughs> I love it. Up next to ineffectively threaten Billy is his father himself, telling his son they can work this out at gunpoint. And while Fred keeps insisting the boy be shot, the commander relents after Billy vows he won't betray him. And he proves true to his word as he goes back to Jinx to keep going on the path of the ninja, but saying he won't betray his father. Okay, but why though? I mean, I get it, personal growth and all, but he's still the leader of a global terrorist organization. Anyway, back in the garage, the commander has some news. He is giving up. He's true. He's quitting and turning over a new leaf. He is an ex-parrot. He says he's messed up his son's life and his own and wants out. And this doesn't come out of nowhere. He was planning to do as much way back when he found Billy in the hospital. Neither Fred nor Raptor take this very well, the bird guy because he needs Cobra's cover, and Fred because he's a Crimson Guard. The commander says he'll write them letters of recommendation for Serpentor. And that's actually a good point. Cobra wouldn't end just because the commander isn't there anymore. Serpentor has been de facto in charge for a while now, but these two act like it's the end of the organization, even though they're even an independent country at this point. Still, Fred really doesn't take this well, saying he owes him, and... Yeah, he shoots the commander in the back, then ominously declares that anybody can wear the suit. Oh, and this doesn't happen at the end of the issue. As you'll recall, that ends with Talk saying there'll be no rescue mission. No, this milestone event that'll affect the comic in a huge way happens on page freaking 11 and is never brought up in the issue again. Yeah, I messed with the order of events in this comic to make it more narratively convenient. And that really was beginnings, dramatic pause, and endings. And yeah, wow! This issue is such a huge deal, I really can't criticize it much. The only bad thing is that nitpicky wrong word bubble, everything else is great. Hell, even Raptor was fun to see because they dunked on the guy so much. Plus, the part with the Joes was really powerful too. With one of the most gut-wrenching comic panels in the series so far being Outback hiding with Stalker's blood dripping on him. Unable to help. Unable to move. Issue 61 of the G.I. Joe comic is pivotal, iconic and a must read. For all intents and purposes, Cobra Commander is dead from this issue on. Yes, I know, but we're not gonna get into that here. Though, if you read it at the time as a kid when it first came out, they did leave some wiggle room with Snowjob also getting shot in the chest with an exit wound, but they said he'd recover, so they could possibly use that as a hint of the Commander's status. Guess you'd have to wait for the next issue! And so do we on this show, except screw you because it's gonna take even longer! Because chronologically, the next comic review has to be Special Missions Issue 6, which deals with Outback escaping Barovia. Ain't I a stinker? Oh, come on, like there's anybody out there that doesn't already know what happens next. Well, I'll see you next time, everybody, and hey, why not like, share, and subscribe if that's your thing?